This is Curtis Spivey with Team ABU with another bargain budget build. This week we have budget green white dino ram. So awesome thing about this deck, it's only four ticks online and $28.59 in paper. And this deck is going to get those red decks out of your area. So first thing, let's go ahead and start what it is. This deck's gonna start with Kanjali's Caller. This is a one drop. You don't need to play a land war elf in this deck because this reduces dino spells by one colorless. So this, no matter what, and you're gonna get that effect over and over for the turn if you were casting multiple dinosaurs. It actually can be better ramp shoe. And here's the thing, it's a zero three. So it's gonna block all those early beaters that we're really having and seeing in this new standard. From there, we've kind of got an all-star that fell off the map with a Drover of the Mighty. Drover of the Mighty is a 1-1 one, one for one colorless and a green, and it gets plus two, plus two, as long as you control a dino. But the best part about it is it will add one mana of any color to your mana pool. So you got a 3-3 three, three for two that's really able to hold down that fort, and again, really stomping out those red decks. The next thing that's kind of an untold secret that's been my sleeper is Siegehorn Ceratops. This is an enraged 2-2, two, two, one green, one white, and whenever the Siegehorn Ceratops is dealt damage, put two plus one plus one counters. If they even think about playing a Goblin Chain Whirler, you're gonna have a 4-4 four, four, and that's gonna slow them down and not even think about playing it. You'll take board control at that point. From there, in case we do get some crazier kind of Graveyard Synergies, we've got Death Gorge Scavenger, who is a 3-2 that when it comes into play or it attacks, you may exile target card from a graveyard. If it's a creature card exiled this way, you gain two life. If it's a non-creature is exiled this way, Death Gorge Scavenger gets plus one, plus one. So it's a really good beater. And with all these Golgari decks that have been floating around, this is gonna give you that added presence in your main board to kind of take care of that. From there, we have got three Jolly's Sunwing. Now this may be one of the, I would say, one of the stronger cards for you to stop those haystacks because it's a 2-3 flyer, 4-3, two colorless and a white, and it's got flying and creatures your opponent's controls enter the battlefield tapped. So if some of your convoke opponents are really putting out all those tokens, this gives you a way just so they can't ramp off and just stop you from going too wide. This will give you that ability to just go ahead and push through. From there, we've got a Territorial Allosaur, which hasn't really seen its stride yet, but it was a Dominaria, it was a dinosaur that kind of slid in there right at the end. It's a 5-5 five, five for four, two colorless and two green, and it's got Kicker, and the Kicker's two colorless and a green, so seven mana, you're like, yeah, it's a lot of mana, but we got a lot of ramp we're gonna go over. So if you do kick it, you're going to be able to fight another target creature. Great thing about this ability is you are going to destroy whatever they have. A 5-5 five, is usually big enough to fight anything else. But the kind of wording on this one, which makes it really strong is it can fight another target creature. It does not need to be him. You can actually have someone on your own team fight. Most of these kind of cards with fight are worded so that you can only fight your opponent's creatures. This is a real big thing when you're talking about other dinos you have that may be bigger. And we'll talk about that here in a moment. The next one we have is a personal favorite called Trapjaw Tyrant. He's two white, three colorless, and this is where that Enrage comes in again. And Enrage is whenever this is dealt damage, exiled target creature and opponent controls until the Trapjaw Tyrant leaves play. He's already a 5-5. Five, five. If you thought that your early game was good against red, so was your late. You've got a 5-5 five, five that if they do end up playing Chain Whirler, hello exile to the biggest thing that you don't care about and don't let them block this or they'll have more creatures exile. Uh, next thing we have, and kind of the big point of this deck, is I'm playing three of Awakening Sun's Avatar. Yes, that is eight mana that you're seeing at the top. Five colorless and three white. When the Awakening Sun's Avatar enters the battlefield, if you cast it from your hand, destroy all non-dinosaur creatures. Not only is that already a beast that can take over any board, you just put a 7-7 seven, seven on board to take over, and that will take over games, clear anything they've had, board stalls, these really big token things that are happening when they make a ton of them, those aren't dinosaurs, so this will clear the board so you can really punch it. 
Let's go ahead and move on to the spells. And one of the kind of cool things about playing dinosaurs from this Ixalan block is we get some of these fantastic dino cards that are dino exclusive, like Commune with the Dinosaurs. You're going to look at the top five card of your library for one green. You may reveal a dinosaur or land card among them and put it into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. You don't get a green ponder in any other kind of deck right now in standard other than this. This is one of the powerful things and interactions and synergies you get with playing dinosaurs. One of the other great things about playing dinosaurs is Thunder Herd Migration. There is no better ramp spell. It's one colorless and a green, but it's an additional cost to cast Thunder Herd Migration, reveal a dinosaur from your hand, or pay one colorless, search your library for a basic land, and put it on the battlefield tapped. That means you really are ramping up. It is the best one, and again, a dinosaur kind of synergy. So the Savage Stomp costs two colorless and one green. This is another dinosaur payoff. It is a sorcery. The Savage Stomp costs two colorless to cast if it targets a dinosaur you control. So we've already talked about all these awesome synergies we have where you can make another dinosaur fight. But the awesome thing about this one, it puts a plus one, plus one counter on target creature you control. Then that creature fights target creature you don't control. You can actually play around and make that <laughs> Or Teratops, the Siege Horn that you have, you can actually make it fight one of your opponent's creatures. And when it fights that creature, it gets bigger and another counter. You have a 5-5 five five that you can play on turn three to just beat in with and clear their board. Really hard for most decks to handle that right now. Uh, the newest addition to we have to make this deck really punch out with that ramp is the new Saturius Route. This is search your library for up to two basic lands and or gate cards. Put them on the battlefield tapped and then shuffle your library. This is an explosive vegetation in standard. When we get these, these always make the ramp decks better. This is one way to make sure you have that double white. And one thing about the budget is we are trying to save you money so people can get back in standard. This is such a good way to go. This will let you ramp out, and we do have gates in this deck, and you can actually get out two gates that were coming into play tapped already to just ramp up to really hit those dino spells. You have so many reducers. We're gonna be playing this ahead of curve, turn five, turn six. You're gonna be able to cast that eight drop. This is gonna wipe your opponent's board with other dinosaurs that they just won't be able to recover from unless they have a sweeper. The new addition that we've seen that we've already been added to some of the new green-white Celestia decks is Flower and then Flourish. This is a ramp spell on turn one if you need it that can let you help find the other part of what you need. You can search your library for a basic forest or plains, reveal it and put it in your hand, then shuffle afterward. Flourish on the other side is when you've already gone wide or you just wipe their board for six mana because you can ramp so hard, you can give creatures you control plus two, plus two until end of turn. Now the one thing, this is a sorcery, so if you've already cleaned up from the turn before or you got it so they could play like one blocker, just making your whole team that much bigger even though you're playing dinos is such just a game ender. It's a great split card and could even be seen more in the future. From here, let's go over the lands. Really simple on this. Eight forests, eight plains, four Celestia Guildgate, four Tranquil Expanse, and that's it. You've got all these budget lands you can now play these two color decks with that are very heavy in the mana colors, and that'll help you out with these lands that won't break your budget. From there, let's talk about the sideboard and some really cool one-ofs in here that we have. We have got one called Bounty of the Might. This is a card that I have that just seen that's finished games with tramplers or even just smaller creatures. It costs six and it's an instant. It can be used defensively or it can be offensively because you have target creature gets plus three, plus three, three separate times. It can be the same creature, it can be a different creature. It can save your creature. It can be added to one. The versatility when you have these kind of modes is just insane. It does cost six, that's why there's only a one of them on the sideboard, but it's four colorless and two green, and is from the new guilds. From there, because I was really making sure we could beat red with this new meta, thought the whole chain whirler, we're gonna have four shield mares. Shield mare costs three mana, it's two white and one colorless, and it can't be blocked by red creatures, and when it enters the battlefield or becomes the target of a smaller building opponent controls, you gain three life. They can't beat that card. Your deck's already good against it. I'm bringing this in, so when you have those top tier players bringing in your red decks, you can compete with them, and they'll wonder why they spent so much money when you only dropped 30 bucks. From there, Savage Stomp cost, again, that one green and two colors and just two more copies of that. Talked about that one earlier. 
And then just kind of a catch-all right there because we are on a budget and we've got four naturalized. Naturalized has gone into everything for as long as you can remember when you did a sideboard card. That is one colorless and one green. It's an instant. Destroy target artifact or enchantment. And there's four of that. It's just a catch-all for all these new spells. Then we've got two more baffling ends. So if we really do need to remove some early game, three or cost less creatures, we can definitely do it with that. We've got that added in if we have issues. And then from the last one, I've got two copies of a super awesome mid-range card that can help just stop any other mid-range deck. It's Priest of the Waking Sun who costs one white. Now he is a 1-1 one, one, and that's why he's not in the main and he's a human cleric and at the beginning of your upkeep you may reveal a dino card from your hand. If you do, you gain two life. So it just puts you so far ahead. And then for five mana, one of the greatest parts of this, sacrifice Priest of the Awakening Sun, search your library for a dinosaur card, reveal it and put it in your hand, then shuffle your library. When you have a deck that's going to go long in that mid-range fight, you can clear the board and then go get your dinosaur at need. This is a really super sweet card that wasn't played. We're bringing back some of these new Ixalong cards so that we can play and really stand up with those new red decks that are going to be super effective and just take out those huge boards that you see with the Convoke tokens. All right, and this is Curtis Spivey with your Bargain Budget Builds. Dude, he's all excited, so I want to play this. Uh, no.